Hey guys, so welcome back to another one. We've got Luke Jackson Clark in this one. So watch Luke on Instagram. As you can see, his style it is really strong in the blacks and shadows. So those blacks and shadows are really dark. It's a bit underexposed and it creates this really cinematic look to the image. So lots of shadows, lots of blacks, but then it's also really smoothed out and curves play a big role in that. Good amount of saturation to all of the colors in the image, but the main color I would say that has been used the most in his images is cyan so yeah really dynamic lighting filters will play a really big role in this as well so creating that really dynamic light really make sure the image is smooth with the use of taking all the distractions out of the image especially these landscape ones so we are working with this shot right here we have the raw image and we are trying to recreate it with his presets so up the top here we can check out his presets i'll be using his presets for this one especially the curves is what we want out of his presets and he's got 28 landscape ones six portrait so you get a lot of presets and it's well worth it and i'll be linking these up down below highly recommend them because of the versatility and he does have a unique style where the curves play a big role in it you definitely want presets if their curves are playing a big role in their images because that can be hard to recreate they make such a big difference with such minor adjustments highly recommend these i'll link them down below so with the use of this tutorial and getting his presets you guys should be able to get it like this all right so we've got the raw image here and the editor jpeg let's turn it into that so settings 4.5 so most things in focus pretty much especially the subject pretty wide at 24 iso kind of low because it's not quite dark a reasonably quick shutter so nothing too crazy going on with the settings but underexposed so we can just keep a lot of that highlight detail as you can see it's kind of maxed out in the histogram so we're going to bring up so we can see everything bring down and highlights and then we get all that detail back in the brightest areas right whites down a bit and then we get a lot more of a better exposed image like here's a lot of color so right now we'll just bump up the colors a lot so we've got quite a well exposed image now now i'll turn on the curves and the these curves are from one of his presets all right i changed them a little bit just one one or two adjustments and i'll tell you why i did that later on i changed this curve a lot to get the real smoothness that he has to the image so if you watch what the image does we get contrast and the smoothness throughout the image so reset and we smooth it out and then the color channels doing a little bit with the colors and you can see that there's a lot of cyan getting put through the entire image and a little bit of an S curve. So towards the end, I'll just show you what adjustments are made to these curves. But a lot of these curves was based off the preset of his that I used. So again, highly recommend picking up his presets. With enable profile corrections. So back up top, let's just increase the shadows so we can see a bit more. And the blacks, the black sand shadows whites bring in contrast and now we have a really smooth well exposed image so again if we turn the curves on and off see how much smoothness the curves add to this well exposed image now he has really dynamic lighting so we've got to do a lot of brushes and filters just before we do that we'll come down to split toning in the shadows we are going for a nice cyan and we're going to put in just a bit and then in the highlights we're going for a nice warm tone you can see there's a lot of yellows and warmth in the sky there so we're just going to help exaggerate all those tones and then keep balance across okay so now we need to shape the lighting you can really see there's a lot to do here so just do a little bit of vignetting and then while we're here we'll just bump up the grain a bit not too much not that noticeable i think it just gives a little bit of texture okay so filters we have them placed so here are all our filters that are going to give us this dynamic light so let's start with a really obvious one up top here bring down exposure and what we're doing is just trying to like guide our eye and, and improve the composition of the photo kind of maybe blacks to get it a bit darker like his to keep all the blues i'm just gonna bring down the cool tones do some hsl work to get the correct colors still then let's go to this one so on the right side here exposure down and then shadows to make it soft and gradual 
Now, I'm not sure about this, but I might just and bump up the saturation there. He does hold a lot of color in the shadows. We'll see, we might come back to that. In the car itself, so what we want is up the exposure. Shine to the car, make it stand out a bit more. Clarity for that crispness to the car. Then possibly a bit dehazed to like, so we don't have so much glare on the car. So like, want to get rid of this glare. So just a little bit of dehaze I think helps with that. And then we'll make it pop a little with saturation. Just real quickly bounce back to HSL, bring down the blues. It looks better. Let's come back to the filters. The road's really important in this one. Like X has a bit of a leading line, so we need to up its exposure. And then the whites for a bit of a shine. Saturation, make it stand out a bit more. Go a bit more whites. Clarity to get that grit. Okay, so there's a really obvious one down the bottom. Do is drop guiding our eye upward framing everything and then there's one on the left we'll just drop this again guiding our eye to the right helping the composition just right in the middle i want to bring a bit of focus to the middle of the image so with this one we're gonna up the exposure just a bit or contrast and then some saturation so saturation up in the middle there now we'll go to hsl and fine tune some colors so we're looking pretty good like i think the um, we've got more warmth to the greens so go this way a little bit but saturation is important get this dimming of the colors oranges just in the sky there um might bring more orange out with the filter we added in the middle because we don't want like our number plate getting too saturated um aquas just trying to match it up down a bit blues need to come down so I'm going to just drop the luminance ever so slightly or most of these. So he has quite a dark cinematic grungy vibe to his edit. So I think dropping the luminance of some of these colors helps with that. Blues though, we're just going to bring it up a bit for a bit of a pop. Um, reds. Of course it doesn't matter too much. There's a little bit in the, quite a bit on the car actually. And... I want that to look quite blue. I'm gonna go that way. Teals, I want our blues to be teal. It changes our aquas a bit too. Might go that way. Purples, not many in this image, but we don't want purple, I imagine, so make it a bit more of a blue for his other images and stuff. Yellows, so especially like looking over here, kind of like going this way a little. But yeah, I might add more warmth right in the middle. We'll see. But I'll just jump to his noise reduction. Here's this mix of like lots of texture, but then it's also very smooth at the same time. I'm just gonna bump up the noise reduction, but the smoothness. And I'm gonna keep the sharpening kind of low. And then the masking up. Option. So that's where it's sharpening. Go with that. Do some more filters. So this one, I think this is a important area of the image and it could do with like some more crispness. So we'll go contrast, exposure, just go with some clarity. Um, if we just click this one, so all these, the horizon or like the mountains here, important part of the image as well. So what we'll do with this brush is just add clarity to that area where the brushes were and maybe some sharpness there too. And what I haven't showed you is the cleaning up of the image. So this is the spot healing brush, removing all the rocks. For example, this is with the rocks. So we, we removed all these. What I might do is that I think we need more grit. Remove the noise reduction, showing you the difference it makes. So if we go, but if we just go reset, you can see how many rocks there are that we got rid of with the spot healing brush and what it does is just really cleans up your image and then nothing is left in your image to look at apart from the subject and the leading lines and the main things going on in the image so we got rid of all the distractions and then it looks really clean so there's a side of the door here so just brushed in the side of the door just to brighten the exposure just a bit there 
And then we have a brush here, which are on the back of the car here. It's really hard to see, real faint to see, but we've just brushed over the lights there. What I would probably do is bring down exposure maybe, just because then you can see the lights better. So maybe exposure down, whites up, and then they really shine. Maybe saturation. They look a little orange, so we could change the nature cell, or we could just add a bit of purple. Warmth. Um, maybe we have to change that in HSL, so HSL, see what the reds are doing, go a little bit this way, oranges, I think they can stay there though, do the lights again, let's just drop them a bit, but anyway, pretty close. Now export, since this is an exported JPEG, they actually look sharper inside of Lightroom than your raw file. Um, just a little thing there, so if we wanted to match them up exactly right now, I'd maybe also increase the sharpening okay so his image so his image and then we'll click on our image pretty similar let's do it again so if we just click this go to his image our image could do with a touch more contrast maybe something like that his image our image let's reset it so this is before this is with it so we really really changed that image up a lot and then look what happens when we delete all masks so that's how much lighting and contrast and dynamic stuff we put into the image and they just all have a purpose of brightening the subject improving the leading lines framing things and guiding our eye to where we want it to go and then obviously all the spot healing that's with all the rocks in there i kind of like it with all the rocks but here it is without them we go with the rocks without the rocks with the rocks without the rocks now there could be a tiny bit more orange to the sky there so i might come up here and go like that yellows could maybe ease back a bit and one of the adjustments I did in the curves that I didn't tell you was I just increased the green and the highlight. So we were like this in the preset and then I just like wanted more green in the highlights to make it more of a yellow. So I lifted the green a bit, was down here, brought it up a bit. I changed this curve a lot, but otherwise like the curves in his presets are really good. He's got a real smooth look using the curves and then like, and they do play quite a bit of role with color as well. Uh, reset, after four, after, all right. You want free presets, free DNGs, and a free training on color and the curves, sign up on my website for the free masterclass training where I teach you everything you need to know about color and curves, like really important things no one is teaching. So color theory and the curves, how to work with the curves, what curves even do, and how to use that in combination with color theory to create any color you want, then any contrast you want with the curves, and then create any style you want. And then if you're on the email list, you'll get tons of free presets, free DNGs that everyone loves so make sure you're on the email list we have about 700 people in the course so far so just come over and read all the testimonials and see if this course is for you it's teaching you the why behind editing quite often people just move this move that and they don't explain the why behind their adjustments so that's the idea of this course guest editors where you get the preset raw image and the lesson because i find it very hard to learn when i started not having all of those so you get the raw image the preset and the lesson to follow along step by step then you'll also know everything about color and curves so be able to really up your editing inside the course so just come over and read all the testimonials what people have been getting from it see if it's right for you otherwise just comment down below who you want to see on this youtube channel so i can just keep reaching out to people catch you guys next month why would you say someone should go for my course rather than someone else's i just think it's the level of depth and detail um, to is is massive firstly yeah. Cool. So if you just want to look at someone do it and, and kind of repeat it without a load of understanding, go on someone else's course. If you really want to understand something in depth so you can apply it and get and become creative, please make your own shots, make your own style, 100% your, your course. It's the only one that has that much depth and, and insight into the thinking process. And also the RAWs actually I, I think are really have some of them where you've applied edits so you can reset it 
um, mm. and then try it out yourself, and then the actual ones that you're demonstrating, the, the fact that you include the creator's rules as well, I was really like happy, but like being able to see like, oh, this is what that shot looked like in camera, and then seeing his editing process helps you find you know, shots that you might not have seen otherwise. So I, I find that creates a lot of transparency. You know, other courses don't necessarily have. 